Cluster Truck is the future of food delivery on demand. Cluster Truck is America's first delivery only kitchen. We cut out the middleman and own the process so we can deliver you hot, fresh food when you want it. Multiple menus, one central kitchen. Cluster Truck lets your team eat on your terms. With Cluster Truck, delivery isn't a compromise. Order at clustertruck.com or on the app today. Clustertruck.com. Delicious on demand. Awesome, awesome. If you guys caught the early morning uh, keynote speech with uh, John Taffer, he said create advertising and marketing that creates a reaction. And I, I just love both of those videos. Those are awesome. Thank you, uh, Brian and Andy, for being here. Brian, let's go ahead and start with you. Um, tell us a little bit more about Cluster Truck and your guys' approach to delivery. Sure, yeah. So Cluster Truck, we are a... Uh, vertically integrated ghost kitchen engineered specifically for delivery. So um, our background is primarily as software folks. So um, we were founded by Chris Baggett. Um, he was a successful so software entrepreneur. He started a company called Exact Target, uh, took it public, uh, was eventually purchased by Salesforce, um, became a Salesforce marketing cloud. Um, after that, he got into sustainable farming, um, you know, started raising uh, grass-fed cattle, pastured pork, um, was selling direct to consumer, realized he could sell you know, all the steaks really quickly, but ended up with a lot of extra ground beef, started a small hamburger stand to kind of offload that. And that was in the early days of the, uh, of the third party delivery game. And the first thing he noticed was, uh, he said, this isn't gonna work. Um, you know, it's unprofitable for the driver, it's unprofitable for the restaurant, it's unprofitable for the delivery companies, the food sits, it gets cold. Um, it ends up being a, a terrible experience all around. So we thought if we took a first principles approach to building a restaurant specifically for delivery, what would we do? Um, so we kind of landed on a few things. Uh, one, we manage the preparation of all the food in connection with where the, where the courier is. Mm -hmm. um, so we know exactly how long things take to prepare. We know exactly what the, what the capacity is of all the stations in our kitchen. We, we manage all that process. Um, and then we also make the promise to our customers that your food is never going to be more than six minutes old. So from the time it is done cooking till it's in your hands, it's going to be six minutes old. Um, and doing all that, um, we also believe, you know, we are the only profitable model that is able to deliver with free delivery. Wow. Wow. That's, that's amazing. Andy, um, El Pollo Loco, you guys have innovated so much with technology these past two years. In fact, um, El Pollo Loco was named one of our Breakthrough Award winners at the Customer Facing Innovator last year uh, for tremendous innovation, including the drone delivery pilot, um, adding GPS curbside location, debuting a new prototype. I mean, tell us, how does this drone delivery fit into your overall off-premise strategy? Yeah, well, first off, uh, I, I want to wish everybody a happy International Women's Day. So want to thank you, uh, thank uh, Abby, thank Angela, and all the other women in the audience. Let's give them a big round of applause. Oh, thank you. Um, you know, when, when we talk about disrupting the delivery space, I think, you know, you've heard some of the other presenters earlier today talk about the fact that we really needed delivery companies when, uh, you know, COVID had its first onset. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, DoorDash, Uber Eats, Postmates, Grubhub, you know, they were a huge, huge part of us being able to stay afloat during the pandemic. And mm -hmm. I think 
you know, we've gotten to a point where delivery is such a much larger percentage of our sales mix mm -hmm. that we have to figure out a way to continue to allow that to be profitable for our business. Mm -hmm. um, there's no secret, gas prices are going up, commissions are gonna go up too. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, drone delivery is one of those avenues that, well, it's probably not ready tomorrow, which uh, Wade from Brinker talked about this a little bit earlier, sure. but I think you're gonna start seeing it appear more in suburbs I don't think it's gonna be penetrated in major cities. I don't think you're gonna see drones uh, flying around LAX anytime soon. But I think the ability, the wow factor is there. Consumers are looking for disruption and you know, we're able to do it in a very profitable fashion that works and makes sense for our business. Mm -hmm. Great. And um, can you tell us you know, how are you working to win over you know, these, these third-party delivery customers? Yeah, I think, like I said, part of it is the wow factor, right? Like people are like, wow, this is like the fifth element. I can get delivery delivered by a drone. Mm -hmm. uh, it's partnerships across departments. I have a great partner in the front row there, uh, mm -hmm. VP of IT Clark. It's our operations team. It's really just getting uh, everyone to believe mm -hmm. that there's an opportunity to uh, kind of see this new avenue forward, right? I think when people say, oh, it's not Amazon, it's not Google that's delivering, it's El Pollo Loco that's delivering the drone, it's kind of a cool wow factor thing. Right now we've limited it only to our best customers. Uh, it's by invite only. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it is still uh, overcoming FAA hurdles, restrictions, a lot of piloting, a lot of test uh, deliveries have to be done before it's cleared in a specific area. But you know we're super excited. It's mm -hmm. something that continues to generate news for us and uh, we're just really proud of the work the team's done overall. Awesome, awesome. So, I mean, this morning we heard Wade Br from Brinker say that he thought, you know, three to four years. I mean, would you concur with that opinion? Yeah, I mean, I think three to four point? years for like mass adoption. I think some of the larger uh, metropolitan suburbs, you'll see it sooner. Mm -hmm. um, and it really just depends on uh, how fast people are really willing to move. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not that much investment in a drone, believe it or not. Uh, we don't own the drones. It's it's done by Flytrex and we have an agreement with them to operate it, but mm -hmm. I mean, it's a lot cheaper for us to do drone delivery. There's no tip, um, you know, there's no fuel surcharge. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things, a lot of factors that uh, consumers receive these nickel and dime fees uh, from delivery providers. Now there's like a service fee, there's a small order fee, and uh, you know, we're gonna be able to take that away with uh, our version of drone delivery. Awesome, awesome. Brian, you had mentioned that customers, when they order through cl for cluster truck, they can get their or orders within, their, their deliver, sent out for delivery within six minutes of being made, is, mm -hmm. that, is that right? Yep. So how are you able to do that? Tell us about. Sure. <clears throat> so we, um, we specifically make sure, so we realized a lot of the problem with food quality and delivery comes down to time. If you can sign the, sure. solve the time problem, you can solve a lot of the problems. Packaging is less important. Um, you know, we, we make sure that we, um, our couriers are a first class constituency in, in delivery, so, or in, in our model. So, um, you know, a typical DoorDash Uber Eats driver is gonna do one to two deliveries an hour. Um, mm -hmm. And cluster truck, we get them four to six deliveries an hour. So we're able to make the economics work and keep our total delivery cost under 10% by we can pay less per delivery, but we can get them more jobs per hour and keep their utilization extremely high in order to make the economics work great for them as well as work uh, great for us. So we have incredibly high courier retention. Um, you know, our, our couriers, you know, uh, we, we were founded in, in 2016 and a large percentage that started with us in 2016 are actually still delivering for us today. Mm -hmm. um, but we, uh, so six minutes, we keep an incredibly tight delivery radius so we can get that, that, uh, that repeat business or that, um, that uh, cycle time sure. um, to keep to keep that high, um, and then we manage that preparation to make sure that you know food all ends at the exact same time, right as when a courier rolls up, they're handed the food, they're on, they're on their way to the customer. Um, you know, even if we're completely swamped and you know um, total delivery time maybe mm -hmm. an hour, if we're absolutely slammed, um, you're still your food is still going to be only six minutes old, and we're we're really accurate in forecasting delivery time or you know total delivery time, so customers understand that you know while it may take 45 minutes to an hour at absolute peak times, your food is still gonna be really hot and fresh. Once really hot and fresh, awesome. And I, I liked what you said about the employee experience, that um, you've really been able to maintain your workforce and your delivery drivers because you've elevated that position. Can you tell us about, like, 
how cluster truck operates, because it's a little different. When I order, order something from one of your 80 items and have it delivered, I come out as a customer to greet. Yeah, so, um, you know, I guess going back to beginning, make sure we are a vertically integrated service, so we are not on any of the third-party platforms. Um, you order through us, the production is, uh, and the kitchen is done, so it's, it's all our software. From ordering to production in the kitchen to delivery is, is all cluster truck from, from top to bottom. So, um, you know, one of the things we realized, and also to, to keep that cycle time high for the, or cycle time low for the couriers, is that there's a tremendous amount of time and friction lost um, parking a car, running up to an apartment, trying to find the customer. Um, so we are a curbside model. So just like if you ordered a Lyft or an Uber and you were gonna meet the car, you track the driver in your app, you see them coming up to your, to your, uh, to your house, um, you meet them at the curb, grab the food, and, and they're, they're on their way. So that helps keep that, that cycle time, um, you know, keep, it, keep going you know, four to six jobs an hour. Awesome, awesome. And um, Andy, what impact has these new technologies that you've added, you know, not just a drone delivery, but also like geolocation for the curbside pickup? And what kind of impact has that had on the employee experience? Yeah, I think uh, it's, it's a challenging right time right now for employees. I think mm -hmm. the um, labor model with the turnover has been very, very difficult for us to continue to keep our restaurants staffed. And so... I mean, not gonna lie, we had a couple of, of times over the course of last year where we had to turn off some of those order modes uh, as a result of just not having the staffing in the restaurant to be able to uh, you know, run a order out to a customer. But I would tell you net-net, um, as we're seeing the staffing levels recover, uh, employees overall are excited about it. I think there's just this general sense of energy around the new technology. Mm -hmm. I think uh, curbside is one of those things, like you look back, probably Panera is one of the first ones I remember that did curbside mm -hmm. in the restaurant space. And it's just something that is just really unique. And I feel like it's a greens fee in the industry at this point. And for us, uh, for our employees, they're, they're excited to be a part of it. They're excited to be on the cutting edge. The customer feedback and the repeat rate is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. uh, currently right now we're with uh, Radius Networks. We use Flyby. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of, the, one of the great things about their technology is it allows us to see where we're doing really well and where there's opportunity for improvement. And our, our top restaurants are somewhere in the neighborhood of a minute 30 to a minute 45 from the second the customer pulls on the lot to that food being in that front seat of the car. So we're really proud of that. It's a really uh, unique experience and it's something that we're looking to continue to pioneer. Awesome, awesome. So Brian, mm -hmm. with a Cluster Truck, when I order through your app, um, am I able to track that order in real time as well? Do you have a geolocation feature in your Yeah, customer? yeah, exactly. So um, you place an order through our app, um, through all our software, it comes through, you're able to track the status the entire way and you know exactly when it's gonna come and where the, where the you know, what stage your, your food is in the process, as well as where the, where the courier is uh, along the way. So it looks, literally looks, you know, if, uh, if you see a Lyft driver coming to pick you up, it, it you know, looks exactly the same in our app, the, the courier on the way. Um, to, to deliver to you. So, um, you know, it's really, we, we definitely took the stance to, um, we want to ensure, you know, going to that six minute time from the kitchen to, to you to keep your food and quality incredibly high. We, we don't batch orders. So mm -hmm. we're still able to deliver profitably with zero fees without batching orders with a one-to-one -one car delivery. Um, and we're able to do that with, with the, the software, we're able to manage those deliveries. So, um, so you're not going to see a, a driver stop along the way to take somebody else, else delivery and kind of hold your food hostage until it uh, until it gets to you. So it is it's directly on the way to you, and you track it the whole way. That's an awesome model. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, tell us what how are you going to evolve Cluster Truck? What you know? What is your what are your growth plans? What markets are you in now? He's coming to L.A. He He's told me. <laughs> <laughs> working on it. Working on it. I was hoping to yeah you, know, you know if we had one sitting in the back of the room that would be really awesome. Um, no, so Cluster Truck, we've existed as our, you know, we were, we are both a software company and a restaurant operator. Um, you know, right now we've, we run the kitchens ourselves. We built an entire tech stack ourselves. Um, it's not every restaurant group that can stand up an engineering team to kind of completely rebuild a restaurant uh, 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 stack from, from scratch. So, um, the, you know, where we're going next. So we're currently, our headquarters in Indianapolis, Indiana. We have um, a whole bunch of kitchens kind of blanketing the city. Um, we also exist in Columbus, Ohio and Kansas City, Missouri. Um, so next for us is rather than, you know, 
if people have ever heard myself or our CEO, Chris Baggett, you know, speak, you know, we kind of rant and rave about third-party delivery and how this is the best model. Um, well, that's not always accessible to everybody. So wh where we're going next is we're going to, you know, look, you know, if you want the whole turnkey model and be able to, to run a cluster truck, we're, we're going to start franchising the, the cluster truck, you know, brand and model, as well as if you're interested in doing this with your own, you know, brands and, and you, and you want to run a ghost kitchen the way we do, run it profitably, run it with, uh, you know, you know, with under 10% delivery costs and run it, you know, extremely fast, high performance ghost kitchens, we're going to start licensing our tech stack as well. So um, my little pitch there is anybody's interested in doing that as well, I'd really like to talk to you. Um, see me afterwards or Brian at ClusterTruck.com. Really excited to, to talk to you guys. Good thing I'm first in line. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Andy's up first. Awesome. So Andy, what's next um, for El Polio Loco that you can tell us about? Yeah, I think uh, right now the biggest piece we're looking at is uh, loyalty. I know loyalty is a very broad-based uh, mm -hmm. conversation topic, but I think you know we've gotten to the point where we've definitely reached critical mass, and we're at a point where we're looking to reimagine what that consumer experience and journey looks like. I think you've seen a number of uh, brands double down on loyalty during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you had McDonald's and Burger King. They launched nationally. Chipotle uh, had a loyalty program rebrand. Uh, I think for me, it was really, you know, partnering with Clark to make sure that we had a business case to take to our board mm -hmm. and uh, getting some CapEx funds to really kind of fuel the growth of what's been a really successful last two years for our loyalty program. So I think that's the biggest piece of what's next. What's going to be involved behind the curtain, I can't really share yet, sure. but I'll tell you, um, you know, it's going to be exciting. We're going to look at loyalty very differently. I think uh, everything from, you know, free delivery, merchandise, other ideas are completely on the table for some of our top loyalty members, but it's really about driving that consumer experience and that's what we're looking forward to do. Awesome. Um, other big thing I'd say is just AI. Uh, use that a lot more in decision making. We're partnered with a company called Brightloom, a uh, great partner for us uh, that's really helping us reimagine just that customer journey and that experience. Awesome. So um, I know you guys came out with a new store prototype and how has the customer off-prem experience evolved at that, in the new store? Yeah, um, I think for us, the biggest piece, and you know, a lot of brands are doing this, is there's not a ton of indoor dining space. I mean, the model has changed tremendously during the COVID pandemic, and you see a lot more um, companies doing drive-through, like larger drive-through lanes, mm -hmm. more drive-through areas. You see curbside pickup spots, a little bit more plentiful in the parking lot, uh, dedicated areas for delivery drivers. Um, I think the sky's the limit in terms of ways of re-envisioning what that model looks like. But I think probably the biggest change for us is just that indoor dining space is going to be smaller. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll see a lot more to-go cubbies. I think that's something that's permanently altered just the landscape of what that dynamic looks like. But, I mean, it's exciting. I mean, it's, it's fun. It's a fun time to be in the restaurant space. Mm -hmm. And uh, design is a huge part of kind of the way brands show up to customers. So awesome. we're excited about the awesome. changes. Awesome. Well, great. So we have a few moments for questions. Good thing we can't see any of yeah. you. <laughs> so while we're waiting, um, let's play a little speed round. Okay. So I'll shout out a word and you respond with the first thing that comes to mind. Uh, blockchain. Oh. <laughs> wow. Um, Stumped. <laughs> not ready. Not, not, not ready. Not really. Not really. Not ready. Yeah. Uh, I, I'd say intrigued mm -hmm. uh, in the sense of it's very cool. Um, is it going to be widely adopted in restaurants? I, I don't know yet. Maybe at some point, but mm -hmm. you know, I'll let some of the other players handle that one first. Metaverse. Really cool. Uh, not for us yet. Yeah. No. NFTs. Uh, I get probably more pitches on <laughs> NFTs in the last four weeks than I think I've had in the last two years. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's clear that a lot of brands are choosing to dive into the space. Mm -hmm. uh, it's fascinating, just some crazy ideas people come up with, but it, it's, it's neat, it's innovative, and it's the hot trend right now. Awesome. I think they're, they're one of the ones where the, the, the technology is super cool. I'm not sure if the use cases have been fully fleshed out yet, and that's, that's what I'm excited to see is, is, is where, did that, where does that actually go? Do we have any questions? That's hard. Uh, down, uh, Tammy. Okay. Okay. How many drivers do we have? Um, 
so drivers are, they're gig drivers, they're contracted directly with us, they're not contracted with any, any other delivery service provider. Um, you know, I think our entire pool for all of our kitchens is somewhere around um, a couple hundred, um, but we can do uh, the vast majority of our deliveries with a very small number of drivers. So um, just a little bit of context, um, our kitchens are, are um, range in, in various capacities. So, um, you know, our software powers kitchens that do over a thousand deliveries a day, the kitchens that do, you know, maybe a hundred deliveries a day or deliveries a day. And we can do those thousand deliveries with only about 30 drivers. And I think that's what's really unique is, you know, we, we make sure we protect that driver pool to make sure they make enough money. Um, we also, um, you know, we, we have an actual waiting list for waiting list for couriers, which is which is really interesting to see. You know, they they line up at our kitchens first thing in the morning to be our to be the, um, you know, one of the the first couriers in. So it's it's a really it's a really great model, um, but we've we've been able to to be really efficient in the way we manage those um, to to make it work out well for for everyone. Well, thank you. Uh, Brian and Andy for sharing your experience and being a delivery disruptor and we'll definitely Stay in touch and watch what you do next. So, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very appreciate much. it. Thank you so much <laughs>